today we're going to look at one of the most common attachment pairings that we see in our coaching practice the anxious and the avoidant pairing. We're gonna do this really by looking at the attaching pairing or the attachment pairing from the lens of three different categories. Number one is we wanna help you understand what the anxious and avoidant attachments actually are. Number two is we wanna help you understand why those two attachment styles are really attracted to one another. And number three is we wanna take a look at the avoidant slash anxious self-fulfilling cycle that they end up getting sort of caught in. So there's a lot to cover here, so let's just begin. Let's start first by defining what the anxious and avoidant attachment styles are. So attachment theory is a set of ideas about how we love and how our childhood affects it, created by John Bowlby in the 50s and 60s. Now, he really argued that there are two types of attachment styles. There are the secure attachment styles and there are the insecure attachment styles. Now, there are obviously three distinct insecure attachment styles. That's what we're going to be looking at today. So you often have the anxious attachment style. That's an insecure one. The avoidant attachment style. That's an insecure one. And the fearful attachment style. That's an insecure one. Now, I know it's a little bit complicated, but bear with me here. Without a doubt, the most common pairing that we personally see in our coaching practice is between people with the avoidant attachment styles and the anxious attachment styles. Now, we think this is predominantly because our audience exhibits them. Now, in a poll done in 2020, we found that most of our clients' exes were avoidant by nature. Now, on the other hand, a poll done just this year found that most of our clients tend to be on the anxious side of things. They're anxious preoccupied a little bit more secure than we thought, but still the vast majority of our client base is anxious. So what are the traits of these attachment styles? Well, one of my colleagues, Tyler Ramsey, did an interview with me a few months ago where he brought up a really interesting point. He basically argued that every insecure attachment contains its own core wound that can really explain away their behavior. But more on that in a second, but let's first start by defining the characteristics of the anxious and avoidant attachment styles. Now, if you've already heard this part, just skip ahead a little bit to when we start getting into why they're attracted to one another. But if you haven't heard it, I think this is going to be really eye-opening for you. So the anxious attachment style is a person who really thinks highly of others but has a low self-esteem themselves. So oftentimes you'll find that they'll put themselves fully into relationships and grow increasingly desperate to hold on to those relationships when they feel them slipping away. Their whole identity becomes wrapped around the relationship, making them more prone to desperate types of behaviors. This is especially accurate when you're looking at breakups, specifically the avoidant and anxious pairing breakup. The anxious person is a lot more likely to blow the avoidant ex's phone up, go beg for them back, search online for how to get them back, things of that nature. Now, the avoidant attachment style, on the other hand, is someone who fiercely values their own independence, so much so that when someone threatens it, they retreat. And at an early age, they're often neglected and had to learn how to self-soothe. As a result, they tend to be lone wolves more often than not. But what are the core wounds of the avoidant and anxious attachment styles? Well, that's easy. The anxious core wound is simply a fear of abandonment. The avoidant core wound, on the other hand, is a fear of losing their independence. So they both fear of losing something. Well, rather, the anxious person fears of losing a person. The avoidant person fears of losing a thing, their independence. Now, these core wounds effectively serve as triggering points for both the anxious and the avoidant attachment styles. And as you can imagine, they often get triggered when they enter into relationships with one another, which leads to an interesting question. Why the heck is the avoidant initially attracted to an anxious attachment style? Now, for months, I puzzled over this question. Now, on the outside, it can feel like the anxious attachment style is a prime trigger to the avoidance core wound, so they'd immediately flee, but that's not actually what occurs. Well, the first thing we need to really do is try to understand that the paradox really lies within an avoidant. Most people think that the avoidant doesn't want to find love, but that's false. They do. In fact, they want to fall in love, but they won't let anyone close enough to let them, well, let this kind of unfold. And that's really the paradox. They want love, but they never let anyone close enough to give them that love. And really, I found this paragraph from expert attachment uh, website, freetoattach.com, that I feel like really sums up the avoidance plight. Unconsciously, they do not expect to be left as they understand attachment figures as omnipresent and engulfing. 
So they seek out partners who are unlikely to leave through avoidant behaviors. So weirdly, an avoidant is searching for someone that they can exert some type of control over. Someone that they know is unlikely to leave. Often you'll find an avoidant threatened to leave the anxious person in a relationship as a way of exerting control and keeping them at a distance, which leads us to the other side of the equation. Real quick, I want to say that if you're new to this YouTube channel or you're trying to figure out what you should be doing to get your ex back and you're trying to learn if you even have a chance in your specific circumstance, Probably the smartest thing for you to do is actually stop by our website, www.exboyfriendrecovery.com or take our ex recovery chances quiz that can be found at exboyfriendrecovery.com. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, taking that free quiz is super easy to do. All you have to simply do is look in the description link below this YouTube video and click on the link you see there. It will take you directly to the quiz where you can fill it out and get an easy answer on what you should be doing going forward and overall what your chances look like in your specific situation. All right, so let's get you back to the video. Why are anxious individuals so attracted to avoidant individuals? We understand why avoidants are attracted to anxious people. Avoidants are attracted because the anxious person kind of lets them get away with their avoidant behaviors. In fact, they give them more love when the avoidant behaviors are triggered and that kind of makes the avoidant feel good. But why are the anxious people so attracted to avoidant people? Well, really everything starts with a core wound and that's where we're going to start. For an anxious individual, the core wound is simple. They're afraid of being left. So this tells us that anxious individuals are often desperate to have a relationship in general. So when they encounter an avoidant and the avoidant suddenly pulls away, it often triggers them, causing them to want to invest more into that relationship. It's the push-pull principle, except backwards. And pretty soon, once the relationship starts, this really odd self-fulfilling cycle begins. I've talked a lot about this in the past, but I'm going to talk about it a little bit more in depth here because it's very accurate here. What is the self-fulfilling avoidance cycle? Well, have you ever really wondered why we've seen so many on-again, off-again relationships between this pairing in particular? In fact, freetoattach.com has their very own graphic depicting their very own self-fulfilling avoidance cycle between this pairing. So, right, the avoidant anxious cycle, right? The anxious person gets close, then the avoidant person runs away. Then the anxious person starts a fight because the avoidant person ran away. Then the avoidant person avoids the solution and then they break up and then there's a short-lived reconciliation and then it just continues to happen again and again and again. Well, believe it or not, I've created my own graphic basically detailing the struggles with these two attachment styles when they've partnered together. One that I actually feel is a little bit more detailed than what is really talked about on freetoattach.com. So in my opinion, there are eight distinct stages that happens when the anxious and the avoidant pair together. First off, the stage, the first stage really starts with the avoidant thinking, I want someone to love me. They want that love. The second stage is when they've found a person that they think is giving them that love and they feel, wow, this is great. My love troubles are over. They've often found the anxious person. The third stage starts when the avoidant person starts to notice some of the anxious behaviors from the other person and the cracks begin to form. Stage four is all about this going on long enough that the avoidant person starts debating on whether or not they're going to leave. Stage five is they actually leave. Stage six is they feel super happy about the fact that they left. They got their independence back. Stage seven is really once enough time goes by where they're left alone, they start to feel a bit lonely, which leads them to start thinking that they can't ever find the right person for them. And stage eight is I want someone to love me and they go around and around in this cycle. Now take special note of the fact that every time any kind of retreating behavior occurs in this cycle, it's usually because of the natural friction occurring between the anxious and the avoidant attachment styles. For example, the cracks begin to form on stage three. Oftentimes what triggers these cracks is the avoidant person noticing the anxious person's anxiousness and that triggers the avoidant persons, which in turn triggers the anxious person, which in turn, you know, it's kind of like a tennis match back and forth. Ironically, though, it's the avoidant 
who seemingly will feel like Sisyphus eternally pushing the boulder up the hill, always craving a deeper commitment, but never allowing themselves permission to let anyone close enough so they can feel that deeper commitment. This is why they end up getting stuck in this vicious self-fulfilling cycle. Now, pulling again from free to attach.com, one of the best websites I recommend reading. If you want to learn about attachment styles, researchers have found that avoidant individuals actually prefer anxiously attached people above all others and vice versa. Each reaffirms the other's belief about themselves and about relationships. The avoidance defensive self-perception that they are strong and independent is confirmed, as is the belief that others want to pull them into more closeness than they are comfortable with. So here's what I want you to do. Anytime you think of an avoidant, simply equate them to this self-fulfilling cycle. And it's a tragic cycle. But is there any way to break this cycle? And I think this may be the most difficult part of this video for people to watch because the solution really isn't simple and it takes more time than most people are really willing to invest. Now, if you think about it, both the anxious and the avoidant tendencies have been ingrained into a person's chemistry from their childhood, from their upbringing. Reading an article, watching a video, listening to a podcast one time isn't going to be enough to solve it for you or your ex, but by simply seeking knowledge, understanding how this all works, you're usually on the right path. There is such a thing as secure attachment gravity. Remember when I started the video, I mentioned that there are really only two types of attachment styles. There are the secure ones and the insecure ones. Now we've been focused on the insecure ones, specifically the anxious insecure and the avoidant insecure attachment. But the goal for every insecure attachment should really be to shift their attachment style always towards becoming more secure. Only then will they find that relationships as a whole can become healthier and more productive. Of course, it's always easier said than done. And just because one person becomes more secure doesn't mean the other person will. But researchers have noticed an interesting phenomenon occur when someone does become more secure in a relationship. For argument's sake, let's pretend that you have an anxious attachment style and after being exposed to more secure individuals and a lot of shadow work, you come out the other end and feel more secure yourself. As you are around your ex, since you are more secure, you aren't triggering them as much. And a type of interesting gravity occurs, one in which the avoidant, your ex, starts to become more secure themselves, or your partner starts to become more secure themselves because they're learning from you. They're seeing it in action. This is because we learn our attachment styles through human connection and camaraderie. Of course, this is the glass half full view of things. What usually happens in real life is that the secure person recognizing the avoidant person has severe flaws won't stick around long enough for that gravity to sh take shape. And so the avoidant person just continues to get stuck in this cycle. Now, from my perspective, this is still kind of a glass half full view. You see, anxious individuals often stick with unhealthy relationships for far too long, leaving them in toxic situations and trapping them in their own self-fulfilling cycle that they can't escape. So as is so often the case when it comes to attachment cells, everything usually comes back around to becoming more secure and creating healthy patterns. It's really never too late to begin.